Okay, this is the standalone controller. Right now you can see that uh, right here, where my thumb is, see the reset is flashing. So when you have that situation, uh, the machine's just been turned on. So you uh, press in the e-stop, and then pull that back out. And now you see it says ready. So now we can use these jog arrow keys to jog the system or, or the axis back and forth, up and down, so forth. And we can change modes by pressing the mode key here. And you see in the upper left here where it says continuous, that's continuous jog. So if I push the right arrow, I'll pan back here and we'll look at the axis or the machine and I'll push the right arrow. And you see now we're traversing across at about 85 inches a minute. And of course I do have limits set up on the machine so uh, I'll demonstrate that right now. I'll push the right arrow again and you'll notice we hit the limit. Now the way I've got the parameters set on this, to come off the limit all I simply have to do is it won't let me go any further with the right arrow because we're on the limit you can hear it beeping in the background so I'll push the left arrow and we'll just back right off the limit and same thing on the other side so these are pretty reliable uh, they're three wire uh, similar to inductive proximity switches only they require a magnet so uh, if you have a piece of metal that you happen to uh, come in contact with these switches they won't pick the metallic up they'll only pick that side and that pole of that magnet it's got to be a specific pole and it has to be magnetic uh, force that engages the switch but they're very reliable so that's that and then if I push the up arrow or positive Y then you can see that now the y-axis is moving, I'm moving towards the back of the table. So pretty nice standalone controller, very reliable. Uh, I haven't had problems missing steps. Uh, I'm going to do some test cutting today. There's your Z. So your Z is the up and down red arrows here and they're clearly marked uh, as such. Y, X and Z axes. So if I push this up arrow, you can see that we raise the Z up. And it also, of course, has an up limit switch. And there you see it hit it right there. Push the down arrow to get off the switch. Now the other feature of the uh, controller is we have a manual pulse generator that you can hand crank and select your axis, select your speed. I don't ever change this one because uh, the only thing I use the manual pulse wheel or manual pulse generator for is to line up on my material so if I have a piece of material or, or a fixture holder set right here and I want to make this where my finger is zero comma zero all I simply do is move the axis over close to where I'm gonna be and once I get pretty close then I'll come over here and change the mode switch and I'll press mode until I see MPG at the top left corner here. See where it says MPG. And once I have that, I can hand crank it uh, and I can see which axis is moving. So right now I can see my X axis moving. So if you look over here, and it moves very slow. I've got it on the thousands per increments. So every one of these clicks is one thousandth of an inch. So if I click this one time like that, that's one thousandth of an inch. Watch the uh, digital readout. One thousandths, one thousandths, one thousandths. And it seems to be very accurate. So if I was winding this X over to say here, just our imaginary part corner, and then I come over and switch my toggle my axis selector which I still need to label 
You can see now we're moving the Y. So I'm cranking the Y. And the same thing, every single click of the manual pulse wheel is one thousandth of an inch, right? Now if I change this selector and I move it one click, now it's ten thousandths of an inch every click. You can see that. That that moves a little too quick for my liking. I mean you can move it faster, but what happens is it, it pulses and it gets ahead. Now that's okay if you have limit switches, not a problem. But for lining it up on your part, uh, that's that's moving a little too quickly for me. So I'll go back to this setting, which is one thousandths of an inch per click. And you can see the tenths stay at four, and you'll see your thousandths change from nine to now we're at 60, 61, 62, so forth. So now I'm using that. I'm going to wind my Y over here, say, and then we're going to change axis again. And now I'm going to move my Z down. And I'll just bring it down towards the top of the. You know, if I had a tool in there right now, I'd probably already be touching. And you'll just touch the top of your material. So if that's the top of my material, material I can set that to zero. And the way you zero out your axis, so let's uh, say I'm at the corner of my part fixture, I'm on top of the material. What you do is you come over here and you hit your shift key. And when you press the shift key in the upper left-hand corner where it currently says MPG, you'll see second or 2ND. That is for the extended keys. Uh, for instance, your extended keys, when in uh, continuous jog mode, these are Z positive and negative. In the second mode, or the extended key mode, this is cancel and that's enter. And by the same token, this is to zero your axis. And so if you push this once, it doesn't do anything. If you push it again, now everything's at zero. So that now becomes your fixture. So now if I go to jog, I change my mode back to continuous jog, and I use my up arrow to pick my Z up. And let's just say I jog off my Y or my X, and I jog off my Y. Now I can come back over here, and I can hit the shift key again and go to my extended keys, second 2ND. Then I can hit go to zero, which is the point we just set at our fixture location. And once again, I'll push this once. And then when I push it the second time, this will move back to our zero position at our fixture. And there it goes. And everything's back at zero, except for the Z. The Z is, uh, in the parameters, I have it picking up ten thousandths above the material. That way we're not just cramming it right down on top of the material. Even though it knows the material top is actually at zero, which would be uh, bringing that down ten thousandths. So it knows where the top of the material is and where the corner of the fixture is now because we told it that. We set it to... So you can move around anywhere on the uh, anywhere on the, the table in the bed there. Uh, and you can set multiple fixtures in your drawings where you can set one fixture. It's entirely up to you. Um, there is no specific home. So we, we're, we're set up with limit switches and homes where you want to put it. So that's how that works. I find uh, I like that better than having to home the machine every time. I just move it where I want to go. Like if I want to zero this C out at the top up here, and make this my machine home position, I can do that. Just run into the limit, and then I can hit the mode, and I can go to MPG, and now I can crank this down until it comes up the limit, 
and I can back it up a little bit towards the limit and I can come over here and I can zero my Z so if I hit if I hit shift go to extended keys now my extended key is zero for this one instead of it being Y negative it's now zero I'll push it once push it a second time and now the Z is zeroed out and the same thing for my Y I can hit my mode again go back to continuous jog bring my Y back until I hit my limit and when we hit our limit it'll stop and now I can back it off with the manual pulse wheel by changing the mode again and we'll change the axis to Y now you'll notice if I crank it this way the limits already made nothing happens it won't move but if I go this way it'll move off my limit so now I'm on, on my limit off of it and then I'll back up a little bit and I'm gonna make that zero for Y so once again I'll hit the shift go to my extended key my extended key for this one is zero and when it's not an extended key it is Y negative so I'm gonna hit zero once I hit zero again and now Y is zero and now I just repeat the same step for the X I can come over here and change my mode back to continuous jog and hold the left arrow and I'll run it over there to my limit boom we stop now I'll change the mode go back to MPG manual pulse generator I'll switch my axis to X bring it off bring it back a little bit you can do this a couple times you can program or you can set the parameters to do its own homing but this is pretty much the maximum machine travel so I'm, I'm as far to the left and as high as I can go with the Z and as far forward with the Y that I can be with this machine so I can achieve my maximum travel from this point so now I'm going to zero out by hitting shift I'm going to zero my X so I'll hit zero down here press that press it one more time and now everything's zero so I have a program already in here and incidentally this uses a USB drive so I have a dot tap file on here and it uh, it does a couple of moves I'll show you so we're gonna go into this we'll hit this page change the page this brings us to our file on the drive and I'll use my down arrow to move down and select that file which right now is the only file on the drive and it's called testmove.tap I'll hit enter and now all we have to do is push cycle start either here or here and the machine will start running its pattern we'll go to toolpath so if you hit the toolpath key hit it once hit it twice now we got a blank toolpath as soon as I hit cycle start it'll say busy for a moment and then the machine will take off moving and now you'll see it cutting some arcs going back and forth and that pattern right there and we are running at uh, about 90 between 85 and 90 inches a minute without any problems or missing steps or anything like it so these 16 millimeter 5 millimeter per revolution ball screws are very tight accurate they virtually have no backlash uh, they are rolled ball screws, but they're C7, and they are uh, they appear to perform, perform quite well. So there you have that. A little rundown on the standalone controller, the DDCS version 3.1 uh, from China, but it does work very well. Thanks for watching.